Hi, I'm Ethan. I love muzzleloading. Today we're back in the shop working on our Vest Arms Flintlock Gemmer Hawking Kit from muzzleloaders.com. I want to do kind of a speed run here through metal finishing today. So this is going to be focusing on our trigger guard, but all of the processes that we're using on the trigger guard are going to be used on all the iron hardware you saw me get cleaned up with the file work in the previous videos. I'm not going to go through and show you how to do it on each individual piece because we've covered everything up until this point. Full disclosure, I want to say muzzlers.com did give me a discount on the kit that we're using in this video, but that is not by any means affecting my commentary about the kit. We're going to generally call this entire process just sanding and polishing, but we're going to use a technique called file back sandpaper. And what all this is, is we're taking our piece of sandpaper, we're backing it with our file, and we're working the metal that way. This is going to help us keep the nice shapes of the cast trigger guard and, uh, and not get any wavy lines or any damage really as far as the finish goes onto our metal hardware. Now to do this, I'm going to start with my 80 grit, go to my 120 grit. These are pretty well used, but you can get the idea. And then we'll go up to about a 240 grit. And then if I, if I don't like the finish with the 240, we can go up to about a 400 grip. But I'm thinking at the 240, I'm going to take it to a buffing wheel. Just get it cleaned up real quick before we head into browning. Now, like I've talked about with this kit, I'm not too concerned with the overall finish on it. As far as like high polish goes, I'm going for this to be kind of a used mountain rifle. So uh, we're not going to go for a super high polish. You can see here on this bow, I've worked it a little bit with our sandpaper and we have a nice uniform finish in here. And that's kind of what I'm going for on the rest of this trigger guard. So I'm going to be switching between files quite a bit in this process. And my file choice is just going to correspond to the area that I'm working. So I've got this curve here coming out of the bow of our trigger guard. So I've got my half round file with my round face down riding through these curves. Depending on the complexity of the trigger guard that you're working on, you'll notice that I'm working in this direction, I'm going to call this the Y axis here, as I'm working this sandpaper. And you'll see some people come in and work their sandpaper in this X axis. And I'll do that here a little bit as we get into kind of these nooks and crannies. But in the kits that I've done, I do kind of like working in this direction and making it th so that the, the grain of the metal, for lack of a better term, is going with the trigger guard rather than perpendicular to it. Now when you're doing this, it can be tempting to just work in one spot, but what I like to do is go around and get the whole piece sanded to a particular degree. And then I'll, only then is when I'll change my sandpaper. That way I don't have to worry about missing or, or going through an area the wrong way. Working the inside again is as tricky as it was before, but thankfully now we don't need as much pressure on anything. So I'm just gonna clamp it in my vise in one end and, uh, and start working it the same way we did the uh, the exterior. Now, yeah. there are schools of thought on this on how much you actually need to do to the inside. You know, so if you're looking to get your kit done quick, you know that might be the kind of thing that you can you can kind of skip on. But I like to get a little bit of an even finish all around here, even inside this trigger guard. And that there is good enough for me on that interior. I'm going to come up here. Hit this guy some. You can see as we're working that, we're getting rid of those filed faces and just smoothing out that surface. That's all we're looking at.
Back in here I'm switching to a small round file on my sandpaper and we're going to work in that X axis. There's no good way in here to really work in the Y with any sort of efficiency. And this is so tight back in here, I don't think it really, <laughs> I don't think you really need to do a lot. Get the file marks cleaned up out of there. And as we come back into this bow, I can bring that around in the Y axis, but really just a kiss with that file and you're good enough. Get this tail in here, I'm switching back to my flat. And again, I'm working in the X axis. to get that face cleaned up. It's at this point that I switch to the 240 grit sandpaper and do a complete pass over this trigger guard. There you go. I'm done a full pass of 80, 120, and 240 grit sandpaper on this trigger guard. You can see the inside isn't quite as polished. You can see the inside isn't quite as polished as the outside, but this is the face that I'm really you know, more concerned about, and I'm okay with letting this interior slide, as I imagine uh, quite a few of you out there are as well. Of course, you can do more or less depending on uh, the kind of kit that you want to put together. Um, if I'm clever enough here, I'll give you a little side-by-side -side of, uh, of the 120 and the 240, and as well as the original piece next to all the sanding steps here. Now, if you were really concerned about your high polish, you could take this up to 400 and then take it over to a polishing wheel. But uh, you know, for what we're doing with this Hawken kit, I think this is good enough. This is the exact same process that I'm gonna use on the rest of the hardware. I'm not gonna vary in any way. This is a simple way to get this done. And uh, I think in total on that trigger guard, maybe half an hour to 45 minutes to take it from the clean file to the final sanded finish. So now I can go through and, uh, and degrease this part and get it ready for browning, which we're gonna cover in the next video. I'm Ethan, I love muzzleloading. Thank you so much for watching. If you'd like to learn more about this kit building process, we have the whole thing documented at ilovemuzzleloading.com. Thank you so much for watching. We'll catch you next time.